says, come, now is the time to worship. Now is the time to choose God. Come, now is the time. surrender our lives. Willingly our knees will bow. With heart, soul, and mind and strength, we gladly choose you now. Let's pray together. Draw our souls, O Christ, closer to yours. Breathe into every wish thy will divine. Joyful to follow you through paths unknown. Help us to find our strength renewed. Give us our work to do. And through the truths you have shown us, help us to make your love known. Show us today what real sacrifice means and what it looks like in true worship. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen.
This next song, Lay Me Down by Chris Tomlin, fits well with the story we're going to hear from Pastor James about the commitment that was shown um, in this offering that was given to Jesus. And this song says, With my heart open wide from the depths from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. And then it says in the chorus, I lay me down, I'm not my own, I belong to you alone. So let's sing this together. With this heart open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. With these hands lifted high, Hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice. I will bring a sacrifice. I lay me down, I'm not my own, I belong to you alone. Shine, take this light and let it shine. I lay me down, I'm not my own, I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, and on my heart, this much is true. There's no life apart from you. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, lay me down, lay me down. It will be my joy to say your will. Welcome again to Virtual Church at Riverside C3 
seems a little weird. I'm sitting in here and we have a electric fireplace in here and it's snowing outside and it's a blizzard outside. It's going to be tonight anyhow and going to get bitter cold, but we get to sit in here and we get to sit in church. This will be a few days later and just dig into his word once again. I'd like to remind you once again to keep lifting up Ron in prayer and uh, support him in prayer and if the Lord leads you, support him in a different way. Once again, we're in Philippians and uh, I'd like to take you to chapter 2, verse 19 through 30. I read these verses and I'm like, boy, what am I going to get out of these? But once again, the Lord surprised me. But I'd like to just refresh your memory. We started in chapter 1, 1 through 11, uh, being reminded of what our confidence is in. And our confidence is in Jesus, and he will perform what he said he's going to do until the day of Jesus Christ. And then in, we talked about Paul's excitement about hearing that the message is being preached, whether good reasons or bad reasons, it's still being preached. And a reminder of the power of the message of Jesus Christ does make a difference. And then what is that message? It's in Philippians chapter 2, 1 through 11, and talking about God and and Jesus set up a plan that he'd leave heaven, become a human, uh, experience death, the death on the cross, all because if we would believe that he did that for us, we could have a home in heaven. That's awesome. And then the next message was on, started in verse 12 and went through verse 18 that talks about now therefore, since he's done all that for us, and we recognize that he has done all that for us, that... Uh, we should shine for him. And I hope this week you have shined for him. Or you have looked for places where God is working. Or you've said to God, open my eyes up to see where I can shine for you. Or be a listening ear for you. Or be a part of where you're working. Today we get to see two guys that helped work in a different way. I'm just going to read through these verses. Close in a different part of the Bible and give a few thoughts. And we're going to pick up in Philippians 2, verse 19, and we're going to go through 30. And I'm just going to read about these two guys. Paul's still under house arrest in Rome. And he just says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. So while he was in Rome, Timothy is with him. And, and I'm not sure how long Timothy was with him, but Timothy spent a lot of time with Paul. He was on a lot of his journeys. He helped set up a lot of these churches. Sometimes Paul moved on Why Timothy stayed back and ministered to these churches and helped him grow. And uh, Timothy was a young person too, because there was one time, don't let anybody despise you because of your youthfulness, Timothy. But in verse 20, it says, I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare. He said, Timothy is a really unique person. He says, he takes a real big interest in you back in Philippi. And you folks back in the church there. But upon looking into that, he spent a lot of time with the Philippian church, helping them to grow. And he had a lot of interest in them. And then he goes on further. Not only does he take a genuine interest, he said, for everyone looks out, for his own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. He says, Paul, Timothy didn't do that. Timothy gave up some of his own things to uh, spread the cause of Jesus Christ. And in verse 20, 22, he says, But you know that Timothy has proved himself, because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. Remember, I just put in there a little bit that Timothy traveled a lot with Paul. Well, this is just Paul referring to that Timothy's been with me on a lot of these trips. And he has seen the gospel go out in a lot of these places. And he's seen hearts change and people change and churches built. And he said, I hope therefore, in verse 23, just therefore to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. He says, as soon as I see which way this is going here, I'm going to send Timothy back to you. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. And he's saying, I'm hoping that I can come soon with or without Timothy. But I'm going to send Timothy home to you. And then he switches gears to talk about another guy named Epaphroditus. 
but I think it's necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier. Them are, them are some uh, interesting uh, adjectives. My brother. He's just like a brother to me, he said. He's a fellow worker. He's been working alongside of me, he said. He's a fellow soldier. And when I think of the word soldier, I'm thinking of somebody that plods along with you in the trenches through thick and thin, who is also your messenger who you sent to take care of my needs. Now, I thought this was interesting. The Philippian church was so interested in how Paul was doing because Paul planted them. Paul got them going. Timothy helped get them going. And the Philippian said, church said, you know what? We want to do something to help Paul while he's over in Rome in prison for giving these messages. He's gotten in a lot of trouble. We want to, we want to do something for him. And, he, and um, so they sent Epaphroditus. And, and it doesn't give any indication what he brought to them, what he gave to them. It just says to take care of my needs. And you know, that wasn't an easy trip. I looked up on the map, Philippi all the way to Rome, straight shot is 400 miles, maybe even then some. But it's not travel like us today. It's by foot or by boat, and there's a Mediterranean Sea in between them. And uh, so it was no couple days he was there or a five-hour flight he was there. It was a couple weeks. Well, why he was there... You pick up in verse 26. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. He, he wants to go home, he said. But while he was there, he got sick. It says he, indeed he was, in verse 20, he, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. He said he spared him of his sickness, and he also spared me the grief of watching him go through all this. And he said, Therefore am I all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad and I may have less anxiety. I don't have to worry about him as much in his health. He said, I'm hoping to send him home soon. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy. Honor and honor men like him. Did you catch what he said? Honor men like him. He took quite the... Uh, uh, task to go all the way there and then he got sick and he come back and uh, he could have said the same thing about Timothy honor him but he says to this church when he gets back honor honor men like him because because he almost died for the work of the crut for Christ risking his life to make up for the help of you could not give me he says he come to help me he took that challenge and um I had to think. When I look at these two men, when I first read this, I said, boy, what am I going to talk about? But I'm like, what were these men doing? These men were serving a man that was spreading the message of Jesus Christ, the gospel, all over the place, and now he's in prison. And they were just saying, you know what? I want to take care of the man that took care of us by telling us the message of Jesus Christ so we could be saved. We just want to go and help Paul. Timothy stayed with him for a while. Paphroditus showed up and uh, helped him with his needs. And uh, Paul was a tickled pink with that. And Philippians was one of the, the Philippian church was one of the churches that tried to meet Paul's needs and tried to help him wherever he was while he was giving out the message. They wanted to serve. They wanted to somehow give back because of the message they received through Paul, the message of freedom and salvation, the peace in their hearts that they experienced. And they knew it was all because Paul was gutsy enough. Paul was willing to go around and speak the message of Jesus Christ. And because of that, them two, Timothy and Paphroditus, were saved, and so was the church at Philippi. And they just wanted to give back to God. They just wanted to give back and serve. And this was... Uh, the way they wanted to serve Timothy and Paphroditus. They wanted to somehow show appreciation for Paul, and so they went to help him. These two men had in common a love for God and his work. 
so they want to serve in this capacity. Let's turn to Luke chapter 7. A different story. Just bear with me, William. You guys have been bearing with me for a long time. And um, Luke chapter 7. And I'd like to uh, just start up in Luke chapter 7, picking up in verse 36. Now, one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. And now this is after uh, he's fed the 5,000. He's done a few miracles. He uh, raised the widow's son. He talked to the centurion who had great faith. And now he's talked to the crowds about John the Baptist. And he picks up. Now, one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And that Pharisee's name was Simon. And it says here, when a woman, why well, was client reclined at the table? When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she bought, brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with his tear, her tears, then wiped them with her hair and kissed him and poured perfume on them. And I, you know, I've read this story several times, and I'm, it didn't grab me like it did this time. I was like, wow, what a gutsy move. This woman knew she was a sinful woman, had a sinful past, knew he was at the Pharisee's house, and deliberately made sure she made it to that house because she, she knew he was in the vicinity, and immediately he goes, she goes in, knowing this was going to really stir things up in a Pharisee's house. And I'm sure there were other Pharisees there and some pretty prominent people. And get this, she's behind him or in front of him, just weeping at his feet. And why he's, she's weeping at his feet, she's wiping his feet with her hair. Wow. And not only is she doing that, she's kissing his feet. And then she pulls out an alabaster jar of perfume and puts it on him. Wow, what is she doing? Of course, you know, when the Pharisees who had invited him, you know, said Pharisees, there was more than just Simon there, saw this, he said, they, he said to himself, is this man where a prophet, he'd know who this who was touching him, what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. And Jesus answered, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii, the other 50. Neither of them could pay it back, so he canceled the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who was forgiven the most. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You didn't give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with your, her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You didn't put oil on my head, but she had poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven a little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who, who even forgives sins? And Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I am just sitting here. Wow. Wow. What an extreme act of service. What an extreme act of adoration. This woman somehow got acquainted with the message of Jesus Christ and he knew he was forgiving sins and she knew she had a lot of them. And she just came and, you might as well say, put her heart in that time with Jesus. Just weeping. And she was just, I just picture her pouring out her heart to Jesus in this act just an appreciation of the lover of her soul. And this was her act of service. She was taking a big chance. She could have been stoned. And you know, I couldn't help but think, who left that house that night in peace, 
in contentment, did Simon? Or did the woman? And 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 I couldn't you may say, James, what's this got to do with Timothy and Epaphroditus? We see three different people that served Jesus in three different ways. And they all did it out of a love for the lover of their souls. For different reasons, they wanted to give back to Jesus. And they did it in their different ways. And that's no different than for you and I. Jesus had done something tremendous for you and I. He's the lover of our souls. He came to die on the cross that we could have a home in heaven. And last message was talking about shining for Jesus. This message is talking about three people that serve Jesus out of a love, wanting to return love back to him. And that's no different for you and I. To want to serve God out of returning back to him for loving us. How are we serving the lover of our souls? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for loving our souls. I thank you for dying on the cross that we could be forgiven of our sins. Lord, help us to grasp anew what you've done for us and have a determination like Timothy or Epaphroditus or this woman to want to serve you, Lord, whatever that may mean for each one of us. I pray, Lord, that you'd work on our hearts once again and give, it up, give us a willingness to say yes to you for whatever that may mean. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Enjoy your week serving Jesus. I am broken at your feet Like an alabaster jar Every piece of who I am For your majesty, I will bow my life at your feet, at your feet. My lips, so lost for words, will kiss your feet. Kiss your feet Yeah Oh, the gravity of you Draws my soul unto its knees I will never be the same, no I am lost and found in you And I will bow my life at your at your feet My lips so lost for words will kiss your feet kiss your feet Oh I will bow my life at your I simply come Longing just to bring 
something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the King of endless word, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song. Song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of. It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing that I've made it, when it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, when it's all about Sorry, Lord, for the thing that I made it when it's all.